Hello, Keith Rocker here, VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are back to working on the Stoker engine, and I'm actually down in Florida, yep. sunny Gainesville, Florida, yep. on this December day. Here I am in my short sleeve shirt. And Thanks. I'm cold as usual with my bald head. <laughs> he doesn't seem to mind it. <laughs> it's about to get hot over here. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, true. Yeah. So, uh, but any, anyway, uh, we, we digress. Yeah. But we got the Stoker engine, and, and the project for the day, and, and we're going to zoom in here and show you in a minute, but I've talked about this before. We've got the, the areas down here in the bottom where the, um, the, the head slides back and forth, and there's severe pitting in here, and it needs to be built up and then remachined. So we're going to be using a spray welding technique today to actually build that area up, and then we'll be machining it later on uh, right. in another operation. But today, all about spraying it, welding it, getting it back up. So tell right. me a little bit about this, because it's a little bit different than the, the system like you see Adam Booth do, where you're basically putting a layer on there. This is actually bonding better to the metal. So tell right. a little bit about it. Yeah, and I'm not an expert, so I'll tell you what I know, and if I misspeak, someone will let... We'll let uh, Captain Rucker know, but um, the Rototec system is like a five, six hundred degree system, and it it will build shafts up, but it's a static situation because you'll slide a bearing over that shaft, and there's no wear or um, uh, what do I want to say? Like um, I don't know what the load would be considered, but anyway, there's there's just pressure between the bearing and the shaft. This is going to have shear pressure on it, and so there's a whole different set up for that <clears throat> and I don't know I don't know if Adam has shown this yeah he has actually okay, yeah okay. I think he's got a video where you, down here where y'all were doing this one so oh that's right that's right but I didn't yeah he um anyway I had Adam down here and we had uh Udeloy or Castellan in here and um with their sales rep and tech guy to show us a little bit more about this system but this is actually a uh an oxy fuel torch we use acetylene um and um it will spray, we'll put a uh, jar on top of this torch, and um, it will actually have a powder go through it, and it'll melt almost exactly that you've, the same way you've seen the Rototech system work. However, the temperatures here are 1800 degrees plus. Mm -hmm. So we're fusing this material to the cast iron, and, and we called the technical department up at Uloy and mm -hmm. asked them for recommendation of the nickel-based powder that we needed, and that's what we're using. For this engine yeah so this this is actually physically bonding to that it's actually welding i guess you could say Correct. to that surface you know it's really becoming one surface yep. in there rather than just building up something on top of it when i read the paper and then i, ta I talked to the technical people there basically you'll have cast iron you'll have a mixing zone where the material that we're spraying on will actually mix with the cast and then the new material will be right on, on top. top that, yeah. So it's not just like base material and a coating like you would use for a Rototech system. Right. This actually does weld, it's called spray welding. Spray welding, yeah, and, and, and like I said, we did talk to their tech people and make sure that this application was gonna be all right and they say, yeah, this is the kind of yep. stuff they use this for yep. all the time. Yep. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Yeah. So let's get in here. First thing we're gonna have to do, and I'm gonna probably shut the camera off, but we're just gonna have to get a lot of heat in this. So we're gonna get a big rosebud tip on here yep. and we're gonna it'll probably take us 15, 20 minutes, maybe even longer. It's such a big casting to get this up to temperature before we can really start this welding process. Yeah, and we put a reasonable amount of insulation around it. We're gonna to try to keep as much heat in it. Yeah, but that's what these welding blankets, just trying to hold everything in, in there together. This is a big job for me. This guy's used to heating up big cast iron pieces. <laughs> I'm not, so I'll do little gears, but uh, but it'll be fun. But right. it'll need a lot of heat. All right, well, let's get at it. We're gonna we're gonna put some heat in here, and I'll bring you back when we start welding. Just got the rosebud tip on there, and. Uh, Putting heat into it. This rosebud really pours the heat in here. Six forty. Six hundred and forty degrees. We've only been at it. Yeah. Maybe five minutes, so not even that long. Not even that long, yeah. So we had a smaller rose, but we actually tried this a couple weeks ago. We didn't have everything set up just right and kind of came back. We had a smaller rose, but I don't even know that we hit 600 something degrees with it. We after. did, but it took like 15 minutes. I mean, it, <laughs> the, the casting was so large, yeah. just sucking up the heat. Yeah, that was the, the, the day of uh, 
Murphy was stalking us that day. Absolutely. We had problems with gas, we had leaks, and we yeah. ran out of gas, and we never did even get any Brand, real spray welding done. Brand new uh, fittings that were leaking. Yeah. But we're in better shape today. Yeah. Hopefully. So here we go guys, we got it all spray welded up in the bottom, uh, and uh, yeah we got a couple areas that didn't look real pretty, but I think it's, it's, I think it's pretty solid, what do you think? Yeah we have a good coat on the whole bottom, you know we did struggle a little bit I think with the side rails, um, mm -hmm. but I think we've got a decent coat, I mean we'll know once, uh, once you get it on the shaper yep. and uh, start yep. trimming it. Start machining it. So. Yeah. But uh, all in all, I, I think we're good. And we got more metal on here than what we need. This is going to get cut mm -hmm. back down to size. And uh, like I said, we'll know once we get it on the shaper. And that is the plan, by the way. Uh, this is going to go to Adam Booth's shop. And he's going to actually come in here with a shaper and be able to kind of come in here and do it. It was originally milled, but they obviously had a very special cutter. The way that it comes up so close to the front here, I would have had to built a special face mill to get down in there. And, just not worth it. We're going to do it th on, the, on, the, on the shaper. I know. I mean, I think the shaper is the tool. Well, actually, what I think is the planer is the tool, but we don't have a planer that's ready. Planer yes, that's right. right. I agree with you. Right. This would be a perfect, perfect job. job for the planer. But, right. But that's kind of where we're at. But I did yeah. want you to just mention a little bit yeah. about the process. Yeah. Because we got a lot of video, but not a whole lot of comments. So just kind of walk yeah. through how, yeah. how you did the spray weld. So we, um, one of the things we're concerned about with this casting was getting enough heat into it. And then I think the other thing that I noticed when we were working on it was um, controlling the heat. Because too much heat and it won't weld appropriately. I noticed that the weld material wanted to bead. But uh, not enough heat, then it wouldn't wet in. And so basically we would heat an area. Actually, Keith would take the rosebud, get an area pretty good and hot just short of what I would say a, a, a rosy red color. And then he would leave that area and then I would come in because that little torch, we were pushing the limits of that torch. I mean, it's not made for this kind of job, I don't believe. And, um, and then, I could, then I could maintain that heat and then spray and try to wet in that powder. And that powder sprays through that oxyacetylene flame. Um, it, it melts as it comes through the flame and when it hits the surface, um, it sticks to the uh, base material and then begins to wet up not dissimilar to brazing. Mm -hmm. I hate to compare it to brazing because uh, well, you... There really you, is a lot of similarities. Right. right. And you can see it wet up and then it wants to glass up a little bit if you're at the right temperature. And so, you know, you can kind of see it's bonding. There's some areas along the side here where we tried to spray. Well, it was more overspray, but when we came back to heat it to actually spray some on the side walls there, um, it started to peel down because it didn't have a primary primary bond initially. And then in this corner up here, I just think we had too much heat. Um, and we were just having a trouble getting um, a base layer that satisfied me. But we have, I, we probably have 10 times more material than we need there. We've got 10 times more material than we need in this area. It started to wet real well. And then this is actually where we had to stop for a minute because we were yep. blowing through acetylene yep. on that one system. So we ended up hooking up two systems. Right, right. So I, that, this is part of, part of this is what you see is where we transition. Stop and we yeah. Have to start back up. So yep. it's not 
smooth, but I think we got a good bond in there. So yeah, yeah. It's a little deceiving right there. Yeah, but, but I'm I'm happy with it, and like I said, uh, we'll know when we get in here and machine it, mm-hmm. and that is the game plan. You know, get it back down to the original dimension. But we have a plan B. Yep. Uh, if, yep. If, if for some reason we can't, you know, this it, it, it didn't bond good or whatever. Yeah. We're just going to actually take it a little bit oversized. I can make my Babbitt block that goes in here a little bit larger. Worst worst case scenario, we machine some out. And we actually just put some cast iron like Durabar back down in there and bring it back to the original size. But I'm real optimistic this is going to this is going to work. And, right. Uh, and keep from having to go through all that extra extra trouble. And I think this will be a more than adequate uh, solution. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you had to put a uh, Durabond shoe in as a plan C or D, yeah. you could do that. It could be yeah. done. It right. could be done. We, right. we haven't messed anything up here by nope. any means. Nope. Uh, and, you know, if it doesn't work, we'll go to plan B. If that doesn't work, we'll go to plan, plan C. C. <laughs> That's right. But, but, yeah. but I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll get yeah. out there. So, anyway, there you go, guys. Uh, spray welding. What's the correct term for spray welding? Spray welding. There you go. Yep. And it's a Uteloy Castellan Super Jet. Um, oxyacetylene spray weld. We uh, and actually, for any of the nerds out there, the powder we're using is 11498. That's okay. the actual powder. It's a nickel-based powder okay. that we're using, and it bonds very well to cast iron, amongst other uh, steels and other iron products. So, well, there you go, guys. I think this is going to be a wrap, Lance. Thanks for your hospitality today. Yep. Thanks for letting me come down and hang out with you and abuse your equipment and toys and all that kind of stuff. Burn through a bunch of gas. Burn through a whole bunch of acetylene and <laughs> oxygen. We did go through a bunch of that That's today. all right. It's all part of the fun. Yeah, but uh, I do appreciate it. And yep. one more step done, hopefully, on this Stoker engine and get this thing back up and going one of these days soon. Yeah, I think it's a great project, Keith. Really great project. Good deal. Good work, man. Well, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And uh, that'll be a wrap on this one. We will catch you on the next video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And comments are appreciated. We'll talk to you guys next time around.